Welcome to another tool review by the Clueless Dude. Let's get started. I was recently asked, what's the best economy driver to get? And of course the answer depends greatly on what you're using it for. But if you're a homeowner, or even better yet, a renter, who just needs to drill to put up the occasional picture, put together furniture, and you have a limited amount of space and you're trying to figure out what is correct for you, this might be the answer right here. The HyperTuff 12 volt 3 in 1 cordless drill. Now it does say drill, but it's also to an extent a driver, and we'll actually test it out and see how it works. The thing which makes this one unique to a lot of others is that it has both the standard driver, a drill attachment, and a 90 degree bend, such so into sometimes hard to reach places. And this should allow someone who is not a mechanic, who is not doing hardcore work, to be able to put up pictures, put together furniture, and things like that. Let's take it apart and see what's in here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this product. It is pretty cool. It has a standard drill driver on the front, so you can put in any kind of bit attachment that you want. Uh, it's got, as you would expect on any kind of driver, both drill and driver, it's got a forward and backwards button. It also has two speeds. And the low speed, it will go ahead and uh, spin a little bit slower, but give you more torque. And if you need a little bit less torque, but more speed, go a little bit around. So I suspect if you're driving in a hard screw, you'd probably want it in the low speed, get a little bit more torque out of it, and we'll give that a shot and test it out later. Uh, the other thing to note about it, there's a magnet on the top to hold your bits or, or screws if they're magnetic. All thing also to note is on the top here we have a torque setting. And what that does is it allows the clutch to disengage at different tensions. So let's assume you're putting in something very, very delicate. You'd spin it over to one, and when the screw got a little bit tight, the clutch would disengage and uh, it would stop spinning. If you're putting something that needs to be a little bit tighter, you go on over a little bit further. And if you're trying to put a, a uh, if you're drilling and you're using a standard drill bit, you're going to go ahead and want to go all the way up to drill mode. And what I'll do is the motor will just spin it until it can't spin it no more, and then it will stop. So pretty cool. Just like most of these other 12-volt tools, the 12 battery comes out like so. On the front of it here, you will find that it has got a barrel connector, and it goes with this charger here. Um, the charger actually works, but it's kind of slow. Uh, this thing obviously plugs in. And once it's charged back up, it will go back into the tool. And from there, you can go ahead and run it, and you'll see that as you're running it, there is a battery indicator letting you know that it is fully charged. Okay, so far so good. So what else does this do that makes it different? You remember I said it's both a drill and a driver. Well, the reason why I said that was, well, this has a standard driver, quarter-inch driver connector on the front. What you can do is you can pull it off this little rubber stopper, toss it to the side, don't lose it and you can actually convert it into a drill. This piece here looks like a standard drill chuck, and on the inside, it's designed to make to this. So you just push this in, and voila, you have a drill. And it's a standard you know, chuck like you expect to see on any drill. And uh, not too bad, it works. Uh, put it in bits and we'll try it too, and we'll give it a shot and see what it does. Now let's assume though that you're trying to get a screw into a really odd spot and you just can't get the drill in there because there's not enough space. Well, this has another cool attachment. I'll set this off to the side. And this attachment is the 90 degree bend. Now this 90 degree bend is different than some of the ones that you'll see uh, on some other tools because you can bend it in almost any direction that you want. This slides up and you can actually turn this any direction you need it to be. So that if you need it pointing straight up, not a problem. It'll do that and when you run it, you can see you can use that as a bit driver to drill in to push in a screw, or you can also use it if you got uh, a bit, a drill bit with a hex handle on the end. It will work just fine. All right, we'll give it some, some tries and we'll see how it works out. As I said, this is mainly probably aimed at the homeowner or renter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a, try putting in a screw that is vastly longer than anyone's ever going to have to do in their home. So I'm going to try to put in a three inch decking screw into a bunch of two by fours. My feeling is if it can do that, you should be able to do anything that you need to inside your home. So let's give it a shot and let's see how it works out. Just be right, there's been no pre-drilling. Well, there you go. Um, straight in, not a problem. And I did that, by the way, in speed number one, which has more torque but less speed. Let's try that again in speed number two, just to see how it goes. I suspect it will not be able to do it. Again, this should be a little bit faster, but with less torque. 
let's see how it, let's see how it does. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's as far as it goes. I'm switching from speed two to speed one, and let's see if we can pick it back up. There you go. That tells me that this 12 volt tool from HyperTough will be able to put in just about anything a homeowner would need. If they can do a three inch decking screw into a bunch of two by fours, well, I think you can put up a you, know, you can put up your plant hanger without much of a problem. I'm testing out the 90 degree attachment right now. It's attached to the drill, pointing to the right. Behind the drill, I have a setup here with about a six inch by about two inch gap, and I can see if I can put a decking screw into the side here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead here. Push this in and we'll see how it goes. Not too bad. Got it all the way in. Actually, even counter sunk it a little bit. So I'm very happy with this. The 90 degree angle works perfect. Uh, it's a little bit hard to get in the leverage, but that's not the attachment's fault. That's just the nature of the beast. I think at this point I've shown that this drill is capable of doing most things that a typical homeowner who is not a handyman just to do day-to-day -day stuff and it'll do it fine. Now I'm going to push this a little bit harder just to see what it can do. In here I have a 7th, 8th inch spade bit. It is not the self-feeding kind of bit. Um, it's just got a point on it and typical spade bit. A 7 8 inch and I'm going to try to go through three 2x4s and see if it can do it. And then I can compare that to the 20 volt version, see how it does. I do not have this pre-drilled. I did put a little notch in it just to hold the bit stable for the shot. Uh, but it is not pre-drilled. Here it goes. All right, well, there you go. Um, you can see it's going all the way through. And my take is this, if this can do this, then it can definitely help someone put up a picture or a planner inside their apartment or house. So all in all, pretty happy with it. And uh, let me try it again with a different bit and see how it goes. All right, I'm gonna try the same thing again, except this time with the speed bit. The difference between this and a regular paddle bit or a spade bit, depending on where you're from, is that this actually has grooves on the front of it that are actually going to pull the drill down at its own speed. In other words, with the first try where I'd used the normal spade bit, I was able to control the speed the drill went, and since this is not an overly powerful drill, it went kind of slow. But because this has threads on the front of it, it's actually going to pull the spade bit down. It's called a speed bit, or similar names by different brands, and they're great bits. This is actually a really good bit, but the problem is, of course, this is not a very powerful drill, so I suspect What's going to happen is as soon as the spade part of the, the bit hits the wood, it's going to stop. No fault of the drill. It's not made for this, but I'm just going to give it a shot. Let's, let's see how it does. Yep, this is exactly what happened. And again, I'm, the reason why I'm showing this is not to give a hard time to the, to the product or to the drill, but rather to show you that if you're going to be using a spade bit, be sure to use the ones that don't have the threading on the front, especially with a 12-volt drill. Now there are going to be exceptions. I'm not a woodworking expert, but I can tell you that with this, it's going to pull down the bit too fast and overpower the drill and cause it to stop. So if you're going to need a spade bit, or if you've tried in the past with a 12 volt drill or a low power drill and it's stuck when using a spade bit, if it has this threading on the front or the speed part on the front of it, it may cause a problem. Instead, I'd recommend you use a regular old fashioned spade bit, kind of like the one I used earlier today, uh, that does not have the threading on the front. Hope that makes sense. All right, I'm going to switch to a 20 volt drill and see how it goes and do a comparison. In a completely unfair test, I'm going to try drilling the exact same hole as I did the first time with the 12 volt HyperTough with this 20 volt DeWalt. And we'll see how much faster it is. This will give you an idea of how much faster a 20 volt is compared to, let's say, a 12 volt.
There you go. And I can tell you right now, that bit is smoking. So obviously the 20 volt, it's a lot more powerful, a lot faster. And I'll tell you what, it didn't feel like it was struggling at all. So the purpose of this test is not to say that a 20 volt is more powerful than a 12 volt. We both knew that. But the point is to show you that you can in fact use a 12 volt for the occasional rare 7 8 inch drill, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. Um, versus 20 volt had no problems. So what's my conclusion? Well, if you're mainly going to be using this, this tool as a homeowner or a renter, just to put up pictures, put together furniture, and just do the very occasional serious drilling, it should be fine. It has plenty of power. Being able to go through a 7 8 inch hole into through three pieces of 2x4 is more than the average person is going to need if they're not a kind of handy guy or a repair guy. If it's just you at home needing to put up pictures, put together furniture, I think this will be great. If, on the other hand, you're planning on building a deck, go get a 20 volt DeWalt or 20 volt impact driver from someplace. Um, beyond that, I've been very happy with it. Um, all the tests, by the way, were done on full charges. I have two batteries that I was swapping up and back, and I was always topping off the charges between each one. And I'll have to say, for the price, I'm pleasantly surprised. I plan on using this for just putting in screws in places where my normal drill just won't fit. And that's about it. Uh, but if you need it as your primary drill for just day-to-day -day stuff, I think you'll be happy. Um, the only thing I would suggest is probably get a second battery, uh, just because the batteries are slow to charge. So you have two charged batteries while you're working. That's all I've got. Hope you're doing good.